From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and welcome to a Cube Conversation. I'm coming to you from our Boston area studio and we're going to be digging into P4, which is the Programming Protocol Independent Packet Processors. And to help me with that, first time guest on the program, Mario Baldi. He is a distinguished technologist with Pensando. Mario, uh, so nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. All right. So, so Mario, you have you have a very you know robust technical career. Uh, a lot of patents. You've worked on you know many technologies. You know deep in the networking and developer world. But give our audience a little bit of, of your background and what brought you to Pensando. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So I started my, my professional life in academia, actually. I worked for many years in academia, uh, about 15 years exclusively in academia. And I was focusing um, both my teaching and research on computer networking. And uh, then I also um, worked in a number of uh, startups and, and uh, established companies in the last uh, about eight years, uh, um, almost exclusively in, in the industry. And um, before joining Pensando, I, uh, I worked for a couple of years at Cisco on uh, a P4 programmable switch. And that's where I uh, got in touch with P4. Actually, for the occasion, I, I wore a, a T-shirt of, of one of the P4 workshops, uh, which reminds me a bit of those people when you ask them whether they do any sports, they tell you they have a membership at the gym. So I, I don't just have the membership. I didn't just show up at the workshop. I'm, I've really been... Um, involved in the community. Um, and uh, so when I learned that what Pensando was doing, uh, I, I immediately got very excited that the, the ASIC that Pensando has developed is, is really extremely powerful and flexible because it's fully programmable, partly programmable with P4, partly programmable differently. And, and Pensando is, is starting to deploy this ASIC at the edge in HOS. And I think such a powerful and flexible uh, uh, um, device at the edge of the network really opens uh, incredible opportunities to, on the one hand, implement what we have been doing in a different way. On the other hand, implement completely different solutions. So, uh, you know, I've been working most of my career in innovation. And when when I saw this, I, I you know, immediately got very excited and I realized that Pensando was really the right place for me to be. Excellent. Uh, yeah, it, it, interesting. You know, many people in the industry they they talk about innovation coming out of the universities. Uh, you know, Stanford often gets mentioned, but uh, the university that you uh, you know attended and also were associate professor at in Italy, um, a lot of the networking team, your MPLS uh, you know team at Pensando, many of them came from them. Uh, Salvano Guy, uh, you know, written many books there. Uh, you know, very storied career uh, in, in that environment. Um, P4. Maybe step back for a second. You know, you're you're deep in this uh, in, in this 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 group. Help us understand what that is, how long it's been around. Uh, you know, and who participates uh, in, in, with P4. Yeah, yeah. So as you were saying before, and, and you were are one of the few people from whom I, I've heard saying it because everyone calls it P4 and nobody says what it really means. So programming protocol independent packet processor. So it's a programming language for packet processors. And, and it's protocol independent. So it doesn't start from assuming that we want to use certain protocols. So P4, first of all, allows you to specify what packets look like. So what the headers look like and how they can be parsed. And secondly, because P4 is uh, specifically designed for packet processing, um, it's based on the idea that you want to look up values in tables. So it allows you to define tables and keys that are being used to um, look up those tables and find an entry in the table. And when you find an entry, that entry contains an action and parameters to be used for, for that action. So the idea is that uh, uh, the packet descriptions that you have in the program define how the uh, the packets should be uh, should be processed. Header fields should be parsed. Values extracted from them, and uh, 
those values are being used to as keys to look up into tables. And uh, um, when, when, when the appropriate entry in the table is found, an action is executed, and that action is going to modify those header fields. And this happens a number of times. The program specifies a sequence of tables that are being looked up, header fields being modified. And in the end, those modified header fields are used to construct new packets that are being sent out of the device. So this is the basic idea of a P4 program. You, you specify a bunch of tables that are being looked up using values extracted from packets. And uh, um, so this is very powerful for, for a number of reasons. So first of all, it's simple, which is always good, as we know, especially in networking. And um, then it maps very well on what we need to do when we do packet processing. So writing a packet processing program is relatively easy and fast. It would be difficult to write a generic program in P4. You could not. But the packet processing program is easy to write. And last but not least, um, P4 really maps well on hardware that was designed specifically to process packets, what we call uh, um, 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 uh, what we call um, domain-specific processors, right? And those processors are, in fact, designed to quickly look up tables. They might have uh, TCAM inside. They might have uh, processors that are um, um, specialized in performing, in building keys and performing table lookup and modifying those header fields. So when you have those processors that are usually organized in pipelines to achieve a good throughput, then you can very efficiently take a P4 program and compile it to execute at very high speed on those processors. And this way, you get the same performance of a fixed function ASIC, but it's fully programmable. Nothing is fixed, which means that you can develop your features much faster. You can add features and, and fix bugs you know, with a very short cycle, not with a four or five year cycle of, of baking a new ASIC. And, and this, is, uh, this, is extremely, this is extremely powerful. This is the strong value pro proposition of, of before. Yeah, uh, it, a absolutely. I think that that resonates, Mario. You know, uh, I used to do presentations about the networking industry, and you would do draw timelines out there in decades because from the the standard to get deployed for you know the the hardware to get baked, the customers to do the adoption, things take a really long time. You you brought up uh, you know edge computing. Obviously, you know we we are you know it is really exciting, but it is changing really fast, and there's a lot of differing uh, you know capabilities out there. So if you could help us, you know, connect the dots between what P4 does and what the customers need. You know, we talk about multi-cloud and edge. What is it that, you know, P4 uh, in general and what Pensando is doing with P4 specifically uh, enables uh, the, the, this next, next generation architecture? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Pensando has developed this, this card, which we call the DSC, Distribute Services Card, that is built around an ASIC that uh, has a very, very versatile architecture. It's, it's uh, fully programmable. And um, it's fully programmable at various levels. And one of them is, in fact, P4. Now, this, this card um, has a PCIe interface, so it can be installed in host. And, and by the way, this is not the only way this powerful ASIC can be deployed. It's the first um, way Pensando has decided to use it. And so we have this card. It can pl be plugged into host. It has two network interfaces, so it can be used as a network adapter. But in reality, because the card is fully programmable and it has um, several processors uh, inside, uh, it can be used to implement very sophisticated services, things that you wouldn't even dream of doing with a typical network adapter, with a typical uh, NIC. Uh, so, in particular, this card, uh, this ASIC contains uh, a sizable amount of memory. Uh, right now, we have two sizes, four and eight gig, but we are going to have um, versions of the of the card with uh, even larger memory. Then it has some specialized hardware for specific functions like cryptographic functions, compression, 
um, computation of um, uh, uh, CRCs, um, if, if sophisticated queuing system, a packet buffer with the queuing system to handle packets that they have to go out of the interfaces or are coming from the interfaces. And then it has several types of processors. It has uh, generic processors, specifically ARMs, ARM processors that can be programmed with uh, general purpose languages. And then a set of processors that are specific for packet processing that are organized in a pipeline. And those uh, are ideal to be programmed with P4. They can we can very easily map a P4 program on, the, on that pipeline of processors. So that's where Pensando is leveraging P4 as the language for programming those processors that allow us to process packets at the line rates of our 200, 200 gigabit interfaces that we have in the card. Great. So, Mario, what about from a customer viewpoint? Do, do they need to understand, you know, how to program in P4? Is this transparent to them? Uh, what, what, what's the customer interaction with it? Oh, yeah, not, not, not at all. Uh, the Pensando platform, Pensando is uh, um, offering a platform that uh, is a completely turnkey solution. Basically, the platform, uh, first of all, the platform has a controller uh, with which the user interacts. The user can configure uh, policies on this controller. So using an intent-based uh, paradigm, the user defines policies. The, the controller is going to uh, push those policies to the cards. So in your data center, in your host, in your data center, you can deploy thousands of those cards. Those cards implement distributed services. Let's say, just to give a very simple example, a distributed stateful firewall implemented on all of those, uh, all of those cards. You, the user writes a security policy, says this particular application can talk to this other particular application, and that's translated into configuration for those cards. It's transparently deployed on the cards that start enforcing the policy. So the user can use this system at this very high level. However, if the user has more specific needs, then the system, the platform, offers several interfaces and several APIs to program the platform through those interfaces. So the, the, the one at the highest level is a REST API to the controller. So if the customer has a, an orchestrator, they can uh, use that orchestrator to automatically send policies to the controller. Or if a customer already have their own controller, they, they can interact directly with the DSCs, with the cards on the host, with another API that's fully open, is based on gRPC. Um, and this way they can control the cards directly. If they need something even more specific, if they need a functionality that Pensando doesn't offer on those cards, hasn't already written software for, for the cards, then customers can program the card. And the first level at which they can program it is uh, um, the ARM processors. We have ARM processors. Those are running a, a um, version of Linux. So customers can program it by writing C code or Python. But if they have very specific needs, like when they, they write a software for the ARM processor, they can leverage the P4 code that we have already written for the card for those specialized packet processors. So they can leverage all of the protocols that uh, our P4 program is already um, supporting. And by the way, because that's software, they can pick and choose in a, among a library of many different protocols and features we support and, uh, and decide to deploy them and then integrate them in their software, in their software running on the ARM processor. However, if they want to add their own uh, proprietary protocols, if they want, if they need to execute some functionalities at very high performance, then they, that's when they can write before code. And even in that case, we are going to make it very simple for them because they don't have to write everything from scratch. They don't have to worry about how to process IP packets, how to uh, terminate TCP. We have the soft, the P4 code for that. They can focus just on their own feature. And we are going to give them 
a development environment that allows them to focus on their own little feature and integrate it with the rest of our P4 program. Which, by the way, is something that P4 is not designed for. P4 is not designed for having uh, different programmers write different pieces of the program and put them together. But we have the means to enable this. Okay, in interesting. So, you know, maybe bring us inside a little bit in the P4 community. You're very active in it. When I look online, there's a large language consortium. Uh, many of, you know, all, all the uh, hardware and software companies that I would expect in the networking space are on that list. So, what's Pensando's uh, participation in the community? And you, you were just teasing through, you know, what does, <laughs> what does P4 do and then what does Pensando uh, maybe enable, uh, you know, above and beyond what, uh, you know, P4 just does on its own? Yeah, so, yes, Pensando is very much involved in the community. Um, there has been recently a, a, an event, which a, a online event that substituted the, the yearly P4 workshop. It was called the P4 Expert Roundtable Series. And Pensando um, had very um, strong participation. Our uh, CTO, um, VP Jane, uh, had a keynote speech um, talking about how P4 can be extended beyond packet processing. P4, we said, has been designed for packet processing. But today, there are many applications that require message processing, which is uh, more, more sophisticated. And um, he gave a speech on how we can go towards the direction. Then we had uh, a, uh, a talk, a talk that was um, resulting from a submission that was reviewed and accepted on, uh, in fact, the architecture of our ASIC and how it can be used to implement many interesting use cases. And finally, we participated into a um, panel in which we discussed um, how to use P4 in NICs, in smart NICs at the edge of the network. And there we argued with some use cases and example and code how P4 needs to be extended a little bit because NICs have different uh, needs and open up different opportunities rather than switches. Now, P4 was never really meant only for switches, but if we looked at what happened, the community has uh, worked uh, mostly on switches. For example, it has defined uh, what is called the PSA, Portable Switch Architecture. And we see that the NICs have um, edge devices have a little bit different requirements. So one of the things we are doing within the community is working within one of the working groups. It's called the Architecture Work Group. And we are working in there to uh, create the definition of a PNA, Portable NIC Architecture. Now, we didn't start this activity. This activity has started already in 2018, but it had slowed down um, significantly, mostly because uh, there wasn't so much of a push. So now, Pensando coming uh, on the market with this new architecture really gave uh, new life to this activity. And we are contributing actively. We have proposed a candidate for a new architecture, which has been discussed um, within uh, within the community. And you know, just to give you an example, why do we need a new architecture? Because if you think of a switch, uh, there, there are several reasons. But one that's very intuitive. Intuitive. If you think of a switch, you have packets coming in, they've been processed, and packets go out. As we said before, that's the PNA, the, the sorry PSA architecture, is meant for this kind of of uh, operation. If you think of a NIC, it's a little bit different because, yes, you have packets coming in. And yes, if you have multiple interfaces like our card, you might take those packets and send them out. But most likely what you want to do, you want to process those packets and then not give the packets to the host. Otherwise, the host CPU will have to process them again to pass them again. You want to give some artifacts to the host, some pre-processed information. So you want to... Um, I don't know, take those packets, for example, uh, assemble many TCP messages and, and provide a stream of bytes coming out of a TCP connection. Now, this requires a completely different architecture. Packets come in, something else goes out. And it goes out, for example, through a PCI bus. So you need uh, the, some, uh, a different architecture, and then you will need in the P4 language 
different uh, constructs to deal with the fact that you are uh, modifying memory. You are moving data from the card to the host and vice versa. So again, back to your question, how are, are we involved in the work groups? We are involved in the architectural work group right now to define the PNA, the portable NIC architecture. And uh, um, also, I, I believe in the future, we will in, be involved in, uh, uh, in the language group to propose some extensions to the language. Excellent. Well, Mario, thank you so much for giving us a, a deep dive into P4, where it is, and you know, some of the potential futures uh, for where it will go in the future. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right. I'm Stu Miniman. Uh, thank you so much for watching theCUBE.